What is up guys? Bro, get my res, Kakis here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we have 11 tips to help you go flawless in the brand new Trials of Osiris activity for Destiny 2. Now these are tips not necessarily coming from a PvP god who just hits all of his shots. No, I am a PvE player and so these are things that really helped me improve throughout the day. I went flawless three times with my three characters. The first First time I did all right, the second time I did a lot better, and by the third time I was top fragging a lot of the games. So these are things that I literally used and experienced a significant improvement within my gameplay. So let's get started. Tip number one is drink advanced GG focus, you get 30% more headshots. I'm, I'm just playing. Tip number one actually is communicate. You want to all be using mics, don't mute yourself. If you listen to music in the background normally, stop it. Stop eating in front of your mic, all of that stuff. You need to be able to call stuff out and you want to be calling everything out. Hey, he's moving this way, he's moving that way, he just took out his shotgun, uh, he just put down a rift, all of that stuff, call it out because information is key. It's 3v3 elimination, every single kill counts, and as long as you have more information than the other guy, you have a significant advantage. But moving on from there and on that same vein, tip number two is going to be spectate from your body when killed. And the reason being is because of somewhat tip number one. You want to be able to communicate and give information. I see a lot of people switch off their orb and just spectate their alive teammates. Why? You're seeing what he's already seeing. If you spectate your body, you can rotate around and you can call out enemy positions. You can give information to your alive teammates that they otherwise wouldn't know. We literally won games because myself or someone else who was dead was able to say, oh, they're actually flanking around the other way. Watch out, they're coming behind you. All of that stuff. People would think they had a cheeky flank, but my team knew exactly what was happening because of callouts. So be sure to keep spectating your body and call out everything you can. All right, moving on from there, tip number three is diversify your team's gear. Seriously, we ran into a lot of people not doing this and they paid the price. A whole team would be using all three shotguns or a team would be using all three snipers. And when that happened, we were able to use this information to our advantage. If the entire enemy team is sniping, we would play really aggressively. We wouldn't let ourselves fall into the sniper lanes and we'd normally just get the jump on the enemy team. If the enemy team is all using shotguns, well, we would use our snipers, play more passively, keep them at arm's reach, and again, we would reap the benefits of that. So make sure to not have every egg in one basket. Make sure one person is using a sniper and then the other two shotguns or vice versa, but everyone running basically the same loadout is probably not the best idea. And by the way, tip 3.5 is other people you face who haven't watched this video and aren't doing that, make sure that you play to their weaknesses if they do have all of one loadout. But continuing on from there, tip number four is use the best gear possible. Trials is not the place for your god roll of the pet weapon that you like but no one else really uses, all right? It's the place for the absolute best of the meta. And some of the recommendations I'm gonna give you guys include, for weapons, of course, stuff like 150 hand cannons are still fantastic. The mind benders and other aggressive frame shotguns are great. The revoker sniper is doing utter work if you do have it. But other somewhat new things are firstly the hard light. The hard light is performing incredibly right now. It's super powerful. Make the most of that and use it if you have it. If you don't, the Suros regime is another great option performing very, very well. Now as for exotic armor, there is a lot of great options. For the Titan, you have classics like the Syntheseps or the One-Eyed Mask, or the Dune Marchers have actually received quite a buff, and as have the Ashen Wake exotic gauntlets, and the new exotic gauntlets that let you shoot through the Tower Barricade are phenomenal too. As for the Hunter, of course the Stompies, like how could you go wrong with that? But you also have the Wormhusk Crown exotic helmet, especially when you're pairing it with the Seasonal Artifact mod that gives you your class ability faster and gives you an overshield when you use a solar subclass. So just run Golden Gun or Blade Barrage. 
Now for the Warlock, transversive steps are phenomenal as always. Ophidian aspects were good before and they actually got buffed recently. I actually really didn't mind the Sun Bracers simply because your grenades last so long you can really lock down an area or a hallway. Or any of the billion things that get your abilities back faster are also probably good choices. Alright, continuing with armor however, tip number 5 is use every single PvP focused armor mod you can. Take off all of your finders that are great in PvE but don't really do anything in PvP. Take off your boss resist and all of that stuff and just load your armor with stuff like dexterity mods for the guns you're using. All of the mods that get you your discipline, strength, recovery, mobility, all of that stuff phenomenal. I mentioned this before when talking about the worm husk but some of the seasonal artifact mods are very powerful as well and there's no reason to not use as many of them as you can. And often people won't take this seriously enough and they'll just have a leftover nightmare breaker mod from an activity they were running beforehand but if you take that off and you load that armor piece with pvp focus mods it can really make a difference. Like you having enhanced unflinching aim and your opponent not could give you the win in a gunfight and the win could give you the match. And continuing on from there, keeping on this trend of gear, tip number six is every light counts. Every single light level you can squeeze into your gear score is super important. Oh no, you have 3000 kills with your risk runner that's really high light but you're using a different gun. Screw it, dismantle that risk runner and put it into the gun you're actually using. This is no time for feelings, this is a time to be optimal. And just one light level can potentially make the difference uh, for doing one more damage. And just one more damage per shot can potentially give you one shot less to kill. And that matters a ton. And that also means that potentially if you're with your boys about to run a Trials card, maybe run a Pit of Heresy first. Just get those Powerfuls, get that Pinnacle, get a little bit more Light Level, and then switch over to Trials. Don't forget about your Light Level mattering. Now moving on from there to some really gameplay related tips. So tip number seven is make the most of a pick. If your team can secure the first kill, that is often the time you want to push. Because the way Destiny is with the slower time to kill, anytime you can have more of your teammates versus less of the opponents, so a 3v2 or a 2v1, any of those scenarios, you are at a huge advantage. So always make the most of that. If you can get that first kill, if you can get that first blood, that may be the time to push in. That's the time to try to secure and defend that revive. We'll talk about that later in a sec. But seriously, a lot of people will get a kill and then kind of get scared and not move up and not make any sort of moves and then the other team just gets a revive and it goes back to parity. On the flip side, if someone on your team gets picked, that is the time to play defensively and I would really expect the other team to be trying to take advantage of that and start pushing in, so just cater your gameplay to account for that. But in that same vein, tip number eight is push solo players as a team. You don't always have to get that first pick, that first blood to get a player advantage and then play aggressively. Often, one of the enemy team is going to be flanking around solo and if you're kind of fighting, having a sniper battle with two guys on one side of the map and then your radar pings kind of beside you, you know, oh, one of them has gone around for the flank. So as a team, you need to capitalize on that, push on that guy if you have a player advantage you'll have a huge advantage in coming out on top if one of your players dies you'll have the other two there to hopefully get the revive before the other two teammates on the other side of the map can realize what's going on and go and defend their teammates and then you got a 3v2 advantage a mistake we saw a lot of teams make is that one of us would get caught solo, the team would realize, but only one person would push out to catch the solo player on the flank. The other two guys would stay where they were. No, you have to push as a team. Again, you're always trying to make light of those player advantages when you can. And if you can collapse on one guy or two guys as three people and get them down, the rest of the team is at a huge disadvantage at that point.
However, continuing on from there, tip number nine is don't leave enemy bodies undefended. Very often, you'll get that first pick, and if you're following the previous tip, you'll move in for the kill, maybe you'll even get one more guy, but then the last guy, people get overzealous and it will start chasing and it can lead to a lot of problematic scenarios. My team almost lost a couple rounds because even we would do that. It's something very common. You just start chasing, but the other guy can very easily loop around and get the two reses of the first two guys you killed and suddenly it turns a 2v1 when you're chasing the guy to a 2v2 or even a 3v2 in the enemy team's favor. That is exactly what you don't want. So often the best scenario is to obviously try to keep the momentum up if you get a pick, but don't get overzealous with the chase and loop back yourself and expect, expect the enemy team to try to be looping back to those reses and potentially go and cut them off and so on. You do not want to pretend like those don't exist. So often people will lose rounds because they aren't giving enough attention to those enemy bodies. They will let them go undefended. Now this does not mean plant your butt next to an enemy ghost and just sit there. It does mean keep it in the back of your mind all the time and be thinking of the enemy team constantly trying to get back and get those reses and hopefully again cut them off, stop them, etc. Next up, tip number 10 is going to be Use more abilities. Use as many abilities as you can because they matter so much. Now normally people are pretty good at throwing their grenade and obviously using their melee, but class abilities are super, super powerful. Utilizing a rift at the right time to secure a 1v1 or get a res. Using a titan tower barricade to get a res is a huge, huge play. And just getting a res in 3v3 elim is such a monumental play and I don't think enough people are utilizing their abilities like I'll see people go entire rounds with maybe a full super maybe they don't even throw a grenade because they don't think oh there's an optimal time to use this you should be throwing your grenade just to prevent the enemy team from going down a hallway for example not even just to try to line up a double kill every single time and I think too many people focus on those pristine amazing scenarios of I'm gonna save my grenade until they're all lined up and I'll get a triple kill that's not going to happen. Use it to win your 1v1s. That's when it matters. And lastly, tip number 11. If you're going for that easy flawless, get the mercy passage, aka the one that forgives one loss. Now there is one that gives you an extra win, so you only need to win six in a row, but more often than not, you'll just randomly face an absolutely stacked team. Like the average team is going to be just that average. They're going to be maybe of, maybe just a little bit above, maybe a little bit below your skill level or potentially all below. I don't know what your skill level is at, but seriously, the main thing that's going to prevent you from going flawless is going up against that absolute god tier team. And it is going to happen. And just having that one forgiveness for a loss is so, so important. And honestly, that's going to be way easier than trying to go 6-0 because you are not necessarily going to verse this god tier team always at your 7-0 win. It could be your second match. It could be your third. Like, you don't know where they are in your card. But seriously, mercy is the way to go for getting to the flawless. And so guys, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative. And if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.